All right, this is another video that I'm uh, excited about doing. Um, it is about the topic of unicorns. Um, are unicorns real? Now, you may laugh. Uh, you may think this is completely silly, like uh, believing in Care Bears or um, My Little Pony or, or something like that. But I hope by the end of it you'll have an idea um, that uh, you'll, you'll understand, you'll realize that really it's not that far-fetched. Um, really uh, unicorns are very plausible um, they really aren't that uh, much different than uh, animals we see today and I'll go through some examples uh, but first um, a little bit of history this is again from Wikipedia um, great source for information um, although you need to be careful because um, Wikipedia has input from all sorts of people whether they're uh, evolutionists, creationists, um, atheists, agnostics, you know, uh, Bible-believing Christians. Um, there's all sources, and I think the majority are probably non-Christian. Um, so if you're a Christian watching, um, you probably know that already, but just be careful of what you read on Wikipedia. Not everything you read is true. Wikipedia isn't 100% uh, truth. Um, we know that, but uh, it does have a lot of good information. So you see a depiction of a unicorn. We all recognize that, you know, with the single spike at the, the head there. The unicorn is a legendary animal that has uh, been described since antiquity as a beast with a large pointed spiraling horn projecting from its forehead. The unicorn was depicted in ancient seals of the Indus Valley civilization it was, and was mentioned by the ancient Greeks in accounts of natural history by various writers, including, uh, and you can read those, the Bible also describes an animal, the ram, the raim, um, which some translations have erroneously rendered with the word unicorn. A um, couple of in interesting points there. Um, why do these ancient civilizations have uh, seals depicting unicorns? Um, did some original ancient civilization um, dream up the unicorn? and that we've just carried that along all this time and we haven't really thought up any other new ones um, uh, and this the second thing is obviously um, the Bible describes an animal some trans translations have erroneously rendered it with the word unicorn I don't know if that's hundred percent accurate I'm no scholar to be honest um, but you need to take that with a grain of salt do your own research um, it, it seems, I believe from my research, and uh, I looked it up on Answers in Genesis, um, it, it describes, I think, a, a one-horned uh, beast or animal of some sort. Anyways, neither, neither here nor there, um, various works of antiquity um, talk about a unicorn-type creature. Um, in European folklore, the unicorn is often depicted as a white horse-like or goat-like animal with a long horn and cloven hooves, sometimes a goat's beard. In the Middle Ages and Renaissance, it was commonly described as an extremely wild woodland creature, a symbol of purity and grace which could only be captured by a virgin. In the encyclopedias, its horn was said to have the power to render poisoned water potable and heal sickness. In medieval and Renaissance times, the, horned, the horn of the narwhal was sometimes sold as a unicorn horn. So a bit of history there, and you can read on, up on that obviously yourself. I just want to go into um, what are, are real-life examples uh, of horned creatures. Now, this may seem obvious, but we'll go to it. Uh, is it is, I ask the question, is there an example uh, in nature of horned creatures? And you say, well, duh, yes, there are. There's lots. Um, there's elk and deer and cows and sheep and goats and all sorts of things. And you can see images, and this is just off uh, Google Images, all sorts of uh, creatures that have horns, right? So that's obvious. Okay. Um, we're good there, we agree so far um, that there are creatures with horns, great. Is there any example of the nature of a single horn creature or animal? And yes there is, um, there's some ones we know today um, which are pictured here, so the rhino, it's got a short horn, there's a, an old picture of an, a cow which happened to grow, grow one horn in the center for whatever reason. And then uh, on the right hand side you see the narwhal there, that is uh, a seagoing creature uh, like a whale, you all know what a narwhal is, but um, it has a very long, uh, many foot long um, horn in its front 
And in the, uh, the next image here, the infographic, you can see they even call it the unicorn of the sea. And it uh, shows you, you know, here's an example. A unicorn is almost as long as a bus. Uh, it goes in to suggest that there's uh, mythical origins, uh, you know, of, of creatures like that. Um, it goes through a bunch of interesting things. Um, but we would all agree that the narwhal uh, is a real animal. Um, you can see where they, they frequent up here, the, the North Atlantic and, and through it above Russia there in the North Pole. It's a animal that we know about, that scientists all agree on. It's in the sea, it's real. We have pictures of it and video of it. There's no disputing it. Uh, we know it was a real creature. All right, so if you take that at face value, um, one would uh, be able to say, well, that if, if there was such a, a funny looking sea creature that we know is alive today um, then it's certainly possible there could be a horse-like creature with a similar appendage. Um, I, I think you would have to agree that it's plausible. Does the Bible make mention of the unicorn? And this is from Answers in Genesis um, and you can see the link there and go to it yourself and read the whole thing. I'll just read a, a bit of it. Modern readers have trouble with the Bible's unicorns because we forget that a single horned creature is not uncommon on God's menu for animal design. And we looked at a, a bunch of the pictures of that. Um, consider the rhinoceros and the narwhal. The Bible describes unicorns skipping like calves. Psalm 29, 6, verse 6. Traveling like bullocks and bleeding when they die. Um, so the idea of uh, there's blood in them, they're out real animals, they're warm-blooded. Um, so that's in Isaiah 34 and verse 7 that you can look at that. The presence of a very strong horn on this powerful independent-minded creature is intended to make readers think of strength. Um, and I take the uh, word of God literally. I, uh, I'll put it out there. I'm a creationist. I'm a young earth creationist. And I believe the Bible is true. And uh, I believe it's all true. Um, if pieces of it are true and other pieces aren't, um, then I would suggest... Um, that I shouldn't be believing in a Bible where part of it's true and part of it's not. Um, true enough, I can't uh, necessarily empirically prove 100% of the Bible or, or that there is a God, um, but certainly um, where it speaks of animals, uh, we are able to correlate that to fossil, the fossil record where it speaks of ages and, and history of man and, and uh, civilizations we're able to match that up with uh, historians of the day like Josephus and uh, Chinese legend and, and his, uh, written history and verbal history. Um, so um, I have good reason and uh, good, uh, good evidence for believing the Bible um, as fact uh, front to back. Um, I'll keep reading here. The absence of a unicorn in, mo in the modern world should not cause us to doubt its past existence. Think of the dodo bird. It does not exist today, but we we do not doubt that it existed in the past. 18th, 18th century reports of Southern Africa described rock drawings and eyewitness accounts of fierce single-horned equine-like animals, uh, equine being horse, horse-like animals. Uh, one such report describes uh, a single horn directly in front, about as long as one's arm, and at the base about as thick as the arm, it's it's um, uh, referring to there. It had a sharp point. It was not attached to the bone of the forehead, but fixed only in the skin. So that's interesting. We have uh, actual reports uh, of such a, a creature, uh, which again lends credence if you add the body of evidence up um, from the Bible, from um, uh, you know the, the spoken uh, legends and history, and um, the written text, uh, we have evidence of this uh, um, creature existing. Uh, you can read about it in the answers in Genesis.org uh, website. They go, they have all the, they, all the citations, um, images, and more detail on it. Uh, Assyrian archaeology provides us one other possible solution to the unicorn identity crisis. The biblical unicorn could have been an arox, a kind of wild ox known to the Assyrians as Remu, and this is where we get the, I believe it's where we get the Re'im um, from the uh, other passage that I was showing there. Um, 
The aurochs horns were very symmetrical and often appeared as one in profile, as can be seen on Ashurnasipal II's palace relief and Ashardan's stone prism. Fighting Rimu was a popular support for Assyrian kings. On a broken obelisk, for instance, Tiglath Pileser, I boasted of slant. Oh, Tiglath Pileser I boasted of slaying them in, Leban in the Lebanon mountains. Um, extinct since about 1627, aurochs were huge bovine creatures. Uh, Julius De uh, Caesar described them in his Gaelic Wars um, as a little below the size of an elephant and of the appearance, color, and shape of a bull. The strength and speed were extraordinary. Not even when taken very young can they be rendered familiar to men and tame. The size, shape, and appearance of their horns differ much from the horns of an ox. These they anxiously seek after and bind at tips with silver and use as cups at their most sumptuous entertainments. The aurochs' highly prized horns would have been a symbol of great strength to the ancient Bible reader. Um, that just lends credence to a, an animal uh, with horns about a ho the size of a horse or an ox. Um, that lived in those days and uh, that was well known and um, lived up until 1627. So that's recent history and then that's, that's not necessarily speaking of a single horn creature um, but I do believe um, uh, that it's not fantasy uh, to believe in a single horn creature. Um, so my conclusion here, do unicorns exist? Um, though they appear to have gone extinct, the evidence apparent the evidence, apparent myths and legends about them, and animals we see today as collective evidence lead one to believe that indeed unicorns were once living animals. Um, truly, if you think about it, they really aren't any different than other uh, horned creatures alive today. The narwhal, uh, for me, is, is the greatest example or evidence. Um, if you're having trouble believing that um, God could create a, a creature like a horse with a horn, you just need to look at the other examples of uh, creatures with horns and uh, this is not fantasy um, this is not fanciful um, it's not the thing of uh, dreams or myths or legends um, God has made many creatures with a single horn uh, so to believe that there is a, a horse like creature that lived and once roamed and was untamable uh, is not out of the realm of possibility uh, I think it's totally possible and, and I I would um, I would sit on the side of uh, uh, believing that they were real animals now I can't prove that to you empirically um, until we find uh, uh, bones uh, you know fossils of a unicorn um, I can't confirm that but um, it's certainly that would not surprise me at all and um, since the Bible speaks of a creature like that I would uh, I would believe that and it's not outside of the realm of any other creature there's a lot more creatures that God made uh, that are way more um, not necessarily interesting but uh, crazy and look funny and uh, way out there um, than uh, a horse with a, a, a single horn on it so there you go um, take that for what it's worth um, go look in the Bible and, and study up on that and um, go look at all the animals in God's creation that have uh, single horns and you'll find out that it's not uncommon at all it's uh, uh, you know it's for animals with horns um, there's a lot of them that have the, the single horns alright so I uh, hope you enjoyed that hope you're interested to go um, check out more information um, check out the narwhal it's uh, a very interesting creature and it, it, uh, it's just one more thing to give you faith in God's word um, to believe that the Bible's true historically it's historically accurate uh, where it speaks of history um, and it's uh, believable it's backed up by faith uh, or sorry ba uh, backed up by evidence um, and we certainly do have uh, faith in it just as you would have faith in evolution um, evolution is not proven it's a theory um, there's not very much evidence at all for evolution um, and that's a whole other blog um, but suffice it to say, um, each of these is, is a faith, and I believe uh, God's creation um, is the true um, beginnings of the world. All right, thanks for watching.